Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to the 2013 Christmas Tournament stream as it continues along. We are on Losers Round 3, and we'll also be seeing Losers Round 4 today. We saw the first series of Losers Round 3 on... We saw the first series of Losers Round 3 on Tuesday, no, yeah, last, no, last week I showed it, and... That was Monkuki vs. Vermine. Monkuki won handily. And now we're going to be watching Kitan vs. Sharadan. And the first game is going to take place on Cataclysm Ridge, because why wouldn't it? I mean, really, that's that's a map that just comes up. So let's begin. We have Kitan west side of the map, Sharadan at the east side of the map. Kitan, of course, plays Grekim, and Sharadan is playing Vekir. And... I should also point out that this is actually being done on the newest version of the game. We are done with version 1.6.0.0 onto 1.6.1.1. And the only real big change is screen space ambient occlusion, which is actually really hard to show off. You'll notice that certain things, like say the interior of this resource processor, are a little bit darker than they would otherwise be, but it's very subtle. It's hard to notice. And it's also pretty much the only big visible change of version 1.6.1, which is why I didn't actually bother to make a patch video on that. Normally I make patch videos on new updated releases, but really that was the only change to show. Pretty much. So, yeah, that's... Even then, showing it's kind of hard. I mean, you sort of see there's a little bit more darkness around things. But that's not the point of the game right now. The point of the game is what players are doing, and right now it's economy construction, which is actually pretty typical. Shardan... Actually, Shardan going for a... He's going for 5 LC and looks like 1 QP on top of that. Kitan, on the other hand, west side of the map, is going for 2 QP, two LC, 1 QP. He's going for an early Octopod for defense, and he's just gotten Q Blast before it right now, so he's not going to be worrying about early attacks. And it looks like Sharon is actually going for an early attack. Yep, 2 Q Plasma resource processors. He's going for an early attack. Possibly a couple early Zion Pulsers. We'll see. It's, well, probably about the earliest you can get feasibly with the even start. Certainly a safe early attack. He's not going for a super fast rush, but he's still going for a fairly powerful early attack. Now, Kitan, on the other hand, is actually two minutes down from there, and he is continuing to set himself up. He has gotten the money he needs for the Octopod, and he will be building an Octopod probably pretty soon. Oh, there it is, right now. The 30-second mark, he is very paranoid, worried about anything that Shardan might throw at him, and he is not necessarily wrong, I guess, but it's not actually necessary at this point. And Shardan is attacking, but that's the 248 mark. That's two minutes after the Octopod is constructed, so Kitan has nothing to worry about right now, or for the foreseeable future. Of course, Shardan is being much more enterprising with the foreseeable future, as we can see. He is definitely macroing further than the present. Kitan, on the other hand, focusing very much on getting a perfect start going. And, in fact, from the looks of it, has, in fact, undone the... No, he has kind of undone the Octopod. The Octopod is over here. North side of the map, he is actually attacking with the Octopod, reasoning that he's probably going to be able to hit fairly powerfully, rather than... And it looks like a couple of are coming to support. So, reasoning he's going to be able to hit fairly powerfully with an early rush, assuming Shardan is going for an early depot and not worrying about... And he is going for a relatively early depot, but no early infantry. We'll see how this pans out. It looks like Kitan is just... Continue to go back and try to perfect this, so I don't... I feel... I know there's a reason for this. I'm sure there's a reason for this, but it's kind of hard to tell between the two players what exactly Kitan is changing here. It does look like he is simply trying to absolutely perfect this, and actually making a resource processor before he makes the Octopod. Making a couple RPs before the Octopod. That Okay, that's what he's doing. He's trying to make sure he doesn't make the Octopod too early. Not a bad idea. Shardon, on the other hand, is... Having to worry about the Octopod attacking his base by proxy and is almost ready to start using this depot. It's almost done. Almost up and running. Once that is, then he will build something. Actually, given the amount of money he had... Oh, well, we're 30 seconds down from when he was. Kitan, another 20 seconds down. Once again, has to worry about being attacked. And his Octopod at this iteration is over in Shardon's base. But when Kitan is more focused, which is in the wake of the blue time wave, he will have a bit more time to prepare. Not a whole lot more time, actually. In fact, he's only got about 20 seconds or so. But it's still something. A couple Octos... Or, sorry, a couple... Oh, whoa. Is that being Faro coming up? Is he going for an early... 
Is he going for an early Reef and Spire? I think he's going for an early Reef and Spire. He's not bothering with the early Octobod, interestingly enough. And Shard, on the other hand, at the 315 mark, his depot is just about done. He does have a Aerial Control Center coming up from there. And the depot is being used to make a Zion Turcher, not Zion Pulsers, which actually with the Octobods and... Okay, the Octobod will make that a good idea. Octobots can easily see cloaked units, and, well, they can't see cloaked units, they need to have support to do that. However, the attack in the base being fended off without Octobots at all, just with Octos and Faros, which is definitely a reusable solution. That being said, Chitin has not built an Octopod. Chardon actually... Okay, Zion Turcher's not a terrible idea regardless, but... He does not have to worry about the Octopod. He is just going straight into Chitin's base. Chitin does have, of course, the Arcticus, and he does have Faros. This is a Faro. That's a Seppi. This is of Artica as well, and both of those are detectors. That Zion Turcher is not going to be able to go too far without detection. However, like I said, Octopods do pose a threat, so I can understand why the Zion Turcher is the target unit rather than Zion Pulsers. Chitin, when he is at the 241 mark, about a minute and a half down from Sharadan, does have a Reef coming up. Very early Reef, by the way. That's ex that is about two minutes earlier than it should normally be, but... I think Chitin's got something up his sleeve when it comes to that. Now, Shardon, on the other hand, fully committed to Zion Turchers. Rather interesting choice, too. Because, like I said, Zion Turchers definitely are stronger against the Octopods. They are cloaked, which is a pain in the butt to deal with. Not so much for Grekum, though. They have the Arcticus right there, and they have Faros. Vecchio is a hard time dealing with this, because Shin Turchers are their only really tough detectors. But Grekum, not so much. Grekum can easily deal with cloaked units, or at least detect cloaked units. Now, Zion Pulsers, on the other hand, this cost in Zion Pulsers would probably destroy whatever Chitin has for Octopods. I think Shardon's concern is that he's not going to be able to counter air units if he's not careful, and that's a valid concern. Air units will be coming up pretty much now, or very soon at least, And but this is a four-minute mark. This is a four-minute Spire. Now... I should point out that this game was actually played... It was played in 1611, but due to a slight mix-up in the hosting, it was played with an experimental variation to the AI scripts. The thing is, the AI scripts for Akron have actually been bugged this entire time. If you notice, the way Liquid Crystal is harvesting, it's... The bar starts... Or rather, point out Cube Plasma. The way Quirkle and Plasma is harvested, when the bar runs out, it immediately starts over. Liquid Crystal wasn't doing this. It was supposed to do this, and it is now in this particular but this particular mod-ish thing. Basically, it's a script fix that was accidentally left in, which if you're watching the stream last time I tried to cast this, that's why it seemed to desync. That's why it seemed to have issues with playback. And Titan is taking a ton of damage on his reef. Far foundation coming in, and the Faro not building a spire at this point, although admittedly, at this point is actually two minutes ahead of where that Faro is. But yeah, my point is, the timings are earlier than normal. And I should point out that the, re the reason for that is because the Liquid Crystal RPs are as efficient as they should have been the whole time. This has been was being used for playtesting, and Jericho unfortunately forgot to remove it. Didn't realize he was using it when he hosted this game. So, yeah, this is a little bit different, but at this point, later games have been played, so replaying this game with the proper official build isn't going to happen. However, both players were okay with it, as far as I can tell, so it's it's gone through, but yeah, so it's kind of a mistake there. But yes, it is good to know that the replay going Borked was actually for a valid reason, because the replay itself was not accurate. Because it was not the files were not the same. But it looks like Kitan is going to be losing this match. He's going to do what he can, but this is one of the reasons why it's a good idea to get Zion Turchus. I can see why he did that. Because against air units, it is obviously not something that Zion Pulsars can do. Like, Zion Pulsars cannot deal with air units at all. Zion Turchus sort of can. They aren't the best at it, but they still can hit them. Although Sepipods, admittedly, Zion Turchus are not particularly good against because Sepipods can move quickly enough to dodge the fire, but I don't think Kitan's going to do that. So Kitan actually is holding this up pretty well. He keeps coming back to Remicro, and even with that, I think he's going to be able to deal with Shardon's forces. And Shardon when he is at the 6 minute mark, has already lost the jump back when he loses the Zion Turcher and the Zion Veer. And there comes that Octobot, although admittedly Kitan doesn't need it as much anymore as he did before. And Shardon is taking a lot of damage. He's dealt a fair
fair amount of damage to the Faros, but they're healing up enough that it doesn't matter. And the Faros, that's maybe 90 Liquid Crystal worth of Faros that's been destroyed at this point. Zion Church are being teleported back to base to repair. But even with that, I think Shardon is really falling behind when it comes to pure Zion Turcher. Admittedly, enough of them might do the trick, but I think he might want to switch over to Arianets or switch over maybe to Zion Pulsers. Or possibly get Halcyon Class. He does have auto defense, and he is using that with the foundations. However, the foundations are not going to last long enough for that to really matter too much. And the Reeves should point out. Double check Kitan's. Okay, Kitan's point of view is a bit behind. And actually, the Reeves are out of energy, or very nearly so. So these Reeves have been partially drained, because Reeves actually use energy to heal. It was a bit of a balance thing. Foundations do not, but Foundations are a lot weaker than Reefs are, so just killing them is pretty viable. And this is where Octopods have a problem. The Zion Turcher, not close enough to the Faro to be detected, so the Octopod can't easily get rid of it. And skipping into the base, however, once again, Arcticus and Sevipods stopping it in his tracks. Teth Pulsar's being built, but I don't know how much that's going to help out. Teth Pulsar's not too bad for power, but they are not the most efficient units for power for cost. Still, I think... That's a way to go. I mean, they are anti-air units. They're dedicated anti-air units, so that's an obvious choice. If they're on the ground, anti-air units, and the ground is taken care of. The Zion Turchers can deal with the ground without too much issue. Admittedly, a couple Zion Pulsars may not go amiss, but I'm not surprised that Shardon is focusing on a single unit type here. And Kitan going for a bit of a counterattack, slight at the aim and mark. Both players are about the same point in time, by the way. They're both at the end level past edge. Neither one of them is going for gate tech at this point. They're both pretty focused on unit production. So at the very least, this match is a pretty good good test of how the economy should have worked on Akron the entire time. As in, since release. This has been a long-standing bug that never really got noticed, and... It does seem like the balance is working out okay, but... One game is not much to test on. However, I'm not sure if the players were aware of that either. They're probably just going with what they can go with, and not worried too much about the fact that the timings are slightly different than they should be. By the way, this is still just 8 minutes into the game, and we don't have Gay Tech yet. Kitan is not that close. The thing is, bear in mind, Liquid Crystal was improved in its gather rate, but not Q Plasma. Granted, Liquid Crystal pays for RP, so you can increase your Q Plasma gather rate by simply building more RPs, but it looks like the players are responding more by building more units. Not a bad idea. It means you can capture territory, it means you can build up a stronger economy overall, and build more units, and win the game. But I think both players are just trying to win the game without expand. Neither player has actually expanded at this point. We're at the 10 minute mark and no attempts to expand, even though Kitan has actually lost a box. This is one thing about the LC change is that boxes are drained a lot faster. Because this doesn't change how much liquid crystal you get from a gather cycle, it just increases the rate of gather cycling. Or increases the cycle speed. So, crates drain faster. Liquid crystal crates. Q plasma is unaffected. So that's why we, if you notice the resource bars the entire time, Liquid Crystal has gone up quite a bit higher than it normally would, while Cube Plasma, not so much. Which is why Gay Tech is not being researched yet, although it looks like Kitan may be investing in it. Yes, he does have it. He is getting it. He is getting Chrono Porting, and he has a pretty good army to use it with, too. Three Semipods, Faropod, and quite a few base class units, actually. Yeah, this is not a bad army. Admittedly, he should probably build more Cube Plasma RPs if he wants to really support Chrono Porting, but this is not a bad army to have when you get Chrono Porting research. And at the 10-minute mark, that is fairly reasonable. But like I said, not terribly surprising, especially given that not a whole lot of expansion has occurred with the extra Liquid Crystal. And Kitan goes for Gate Tech. That's the 10-15 mark. Shardon starts to deal with these forces, but unfortunately for him, he does not have detection. The Faropod here remains cloaked. Semipods can be gotten rid of fairly easily, but the Faropod, not so much. And it's going to be able to take care of everything. And actually, the Teth Pulsar is not enough of them, not dealing enough damage to the Semipods to really work out. Double check back at base. Shardon is getting some areas. He is going to get some Shin Turchers very soon. Because Shin Turchers detect. And... Okay, this can't be right. Kitan, from his point of view, that's more what I expect. The Faropod dealing with the Zion Turchers as best as it can. And the Zion Turchers trying to do what they can to get rid of the RPs. But this base is pretty well defended. Honestly, I don't think anything short of... Well, basically, I don't think anything short of Zion Pulsar or Zion Halcyon attacks. And Zion Pulsar is being built. Shardon realizes that he needs Zion Pulsars, needs that firepower for cost, and goes for it. I am very surprised that Shin Turcher has not shown up, though. Teth Turcher popping up. Good, but still no means of detection right now. There are no Shin units at all. No Shin Veer, no Shin Pulsar. Sorry, no Shin Veer, no Shin Turcher, and no foundations, but 
Shinveer builds. He needs Shinveer in one way or another in order to find and stop this Farapod. And Kaiden has actually chronoported back, dealing with his attack before it even hits, getting rid of most of it, and Sharnan is going to be losing a lot to this, and it looks like beyond that he's actually re chronoported Double check. No, it's just one chronoport. One departure, one arrival. He has not re chronoported this, but he still is going to get rid of the army that attacked here before it even attacks. The blue time of carries the truth. And that truth is Shardan's army is basically dead. Shardan's going to have to rebuild that army. If Shardan's lucky, he's going to be able to have a chance to rebuild that army. I don't know how lucky Shardan is. Kitan is a very powerful player, and he has chronoporting on his side as Grekum. And Shardan has no gay tech. Shardan's window of opportunity, I believe, has closed. I could be wrong, but I don't think that's not the case. I think his opportunity is probably gone for game one. Uh, if he gets gate tech, he's going to have a chance, but his only other possibility is to defend really well, consolidate his forces, and basically keep them... Maybe try to expand a bit, but then keep him where he's going to be attacked. Because right now, Kitan can just tear apart his army with chronoporting. Although, admittedly, this is actually with the blue time wave. Perhaps the green time wave carries truth. Yeah, the green time wave... Never mind, the green time wave is the one that carries the truth, not the blue time wave. They'll check the red time wave too, because they don't... No, I think the departure was... Or sorry, the arrival, I believe, was etched onto time in an indelible way. But we'll see. The red time wave might change that. However, the green time wave looks like it is carrying the changes. We see that Kitan is taking a lot less damage now. So I think that this green time wave is going to basically spell Sharadon's doom. We'll find out. And that will happen right now. The green time wave is just about to overtake Kitan's point of view, which is where we are looking from. And there it comes. Kitan's point of view, he is... Able to get in a fair bit farther, but actually Shardon did have enough defensive forces to deal with this. He did build enough to, despite the chronoporting, have an answer. Because chronoporting isn't the be-all end-all. I mean, if you set up your defenses in advance and you have your units intercept your where your opponent will be, it requires a fair amount of prediction, but it is doable. Actually, numbers, if any of you remember numbers, one of the first games I casted with him involved him setting up a really good defense in advance of chronoporting. However, Shardon, not so much. He does have... He did have a good interception there, but he still is getting attacked. He still is getting his expansion damaged in the unplayable past. And that is going to be a problem. As you can see, Shardan has already lost this. And in fact, most of his his economy is dead. In fact, he's pretty much dead in the water. He has a couple of Shin, Shin Churchers, which help. But he has no Liquid Crystal. He has some Cube Plasma, so he can still convert, but that's not going to be enough. He has the RPs to get more. But even with that... One good Chronoport, and Kitan has sealed the game. And even without the Chronoport, I think Kitan... Yeah, Kitan's got it. Sharnan's going to be throwing in the towel any second now, because Kitan has this game. Ah, okay. One more shot. Once more into the breach, just for the sake of trying. Looks like that Shin Turcher is adopting that particular attitude, which will not serve it well. Sorry to say, that Shin Turcher is quite dead. However... Shardan still has another game. This is game one, he can go on to game two. And then, if he wins that, game three. And from there, we will see him possibly do better. Admittedly, he didn't do bad at the start. It's just that Titan fended off the Zion Turcher attacks, and after fending off the Zion Turcher attacks, had the opportunity to build air. And Shardan, I guess, didn't expect air to come that early. That's probably what the big thing was. He did not expect air to be that early. So I don't... I can't say I'm surprised. I can't really say I blame him. It's just that air came a lot earlier than it would have normally, and that, of course, means that he didn't have the responses in time. But that, so that is game. Shardan is, well, just about game. Now that Shin Churcher is dead, that will be game. Titan hasn't even gone for a Chronoport yet. Nope, that's it. Shardan, GG's. So, by the way, I should point out, just before anyone, although admittedly I should probably pointed this out several minutes ago, but I didn't want to distract the game too much. The fact that the economy is different due to an AI change, due to a mod game files change, that is something that shouldn't happen. And apparently the players either agreed that this game was still valid, despite it. I mean, the thing is, we are changing patch versions throughout the tournament, and that itself is problematic. But the players either decided that that was valid. Bear in mind that there's actually no real balance changes between 1601 and 1611, but still. So yeah, the players, I think, either agreed to it. I'm not sure. It's, at the very least past that point, other games following this one, which depend on the results of this one, have been played. So, it's too late to replay this one. However, 
for the record. And Cybernetic Pony was the one who set the rules, not me. So, his tournament, his rules. However, for the record, for any tournaments that I may run in the future, if I run any tournaments in the future, though no promises, this would be something that would cause you to be disqualified as a ref, like as a host. It would be tantamount to cheating, because the thing is basically... One of the ways to cheat, one of the few ways to cheat in Akron is to modify the files on the host. But the thing is, that doesn't really work because the replay files, if they use different data, as we saw here, if the games don't match up, you're going to get desync problems. You're going to get playback issues. And playback issues and replays, assuming replays are perfect, which they are very close to, if not actually at that point by now, are signs that this sort of tampering has happened. And if replays are perfect, they're indisputable signs that this sort of tampering has happened because there's no other reason it could happen. And that would be basically, yeah, you cheated. You cheated for the players. In this case, it was an honest mistake and apparently went through fine. Just for the record, it's not something that in general is supported in the Akron competitive community, what there is of it. It's something that was simply an honest mistake that no one really realized until I tried to replay the replays. Anyway... On to the next game, so stay tuned for that, and I'll be back shortly. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the second game of the Lucis Round 3 Series 2 for the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. I'm Shadow for UCC3, your host. Should probably mention that last game, but I didn't. However, I'm mentioning it now. And I've always been me. At least, as far as as far back as I can remember, I've been me. I may have been someone else prior. But right now, I am me, and that is useful. When casting a, casting a game is not a good time to have an identity crisis. It is also a good time to describe what's going on. So last game, we had Chrono reporting win the day, but also rather unconventional strategies due to the economy mod thing that accidentally got thrown in here, which I mentioned last game, not going to go into detail about now. Basically, LC gathers at the rate all we should have. Now, last game, good use of Zion Torturers. Interesting choice because normally you see Zion Pulsers against Grekum, and then you try to be Zion Pulsar versus Octopod, and then it develop into air with sort of an air war with a bit of ground support, and then into Halcyon class to fight Octopods. This game started out with Zion Torturers. That, there's like the last game started with Zion Torturers, that was interesting. Ended up with Chrono Porting area units as normally does. Game two is going to be on Rooftop Showdown, which is often a map that you get a lot of rushes on. It's very... It seems big, but it's actually kind of small. So, let's go. Kitan is on the east side of the map. Shardon is on the west side of the map. Shardon is going for Vecchio, of course, and Kitan will be going for Grekim, no doubt. There it is. Grekim for Kitan and Vecchio for Shardon. And we are, of course, waiting for the players as they are paused. So we'll just wait until they're... Okay, unpausing Shardan, going to scout. Kitan is going to be setting up his early economy. Not going for an early resource processor on Q-Plasm for the early Octopod, which is interesting choice. Admittedly, Cataclysm Ridge is definitely more... Well, it's about as rush-friendly as Rooftop Showdown is. Like I said, Rooftop Showdown seems big. It's 320 by 240, but the thing is, 320 side is the long side. However, it's fully straight, or just about. There's a small obstacle here. Well, this hexagon here is an obstacle, but it's basically straight. So the rush distance is about the same as... I think it's about the same as it is on Rooftop... Sh sorry, on Cataclysm Ridge. I would have to check, but I think it's pretty close. Just doing a bit of back-of-the-envelope math on it. So, Shardon setting up his economy, getting 5 LC, nothing really to say about that. Kaiden, on the other hand, like I said, not going for the early Q-Plasma, which is surprising. He might be going for an early Octo Rush, but I kind of doubt it. I think he might be just not worried about getting attacked early on. After the last game being Zion Turcher heavy, I think he's assuming that Shardon is not going for the typical Zion Pulsar attacks. And early scouting going on. Tethbeer, Shinbeer versus Octo. The Octo wins, which isn't surprising. Not sure if Shardon's going to keep that scouting going. He might just try to avoid that. Rooftop Showdown, you often see players will meet up in the middle. Their scouts will hit each other, and then they'll try to avoid it, either going along the south side or going up, not usually up the north, but sometimes wading back and then coming in or maybe going around. I've never seen actually anyone go around this particular knuckle, but a lot of times people will try to back off. And Elizabeth Shardon is, in fact, backing off. He might take the south path just to see what Kitan is up to, or he might be confident that he knows what Kitan is up to, knowing that Kitan is playing Grekum. And... No, he is in fact just 
moving his unit in such a way that it's going to take advantage of the Shinbeer's range. Keeping the Shinbeer as far as possible from the Octo, but even that doesn't help that much. Unfortunately for Sharadan, the Octo moves too quickly. Not a bad idea, though. Just pushing the Tethvir as far in front as possible to allow the... Well, maybe not as far in front as possible. Actually, probably could have probably tripled that distance and it would have still worked fine. Shinbeer have a very high attack range. Like, oh, I guess I can't really show it here, but yeah. They have a pretty high attack range. It's... I believe a, to about here. The Tethvir about half that, but... Shinbeer could have been a bit further back in order to take advantage of the range. However, it looks like Kitan is not actually committing to that attack. That attack has been echoed out, and apparently Shardan is... Well, Shardan actually will see it, assuming he's on the ball. No, he's not. He, if he jumps back about two seconds, he will see it. His orders did go through, his old orders apparently, so he is able to see what Kitan is up to from Kitan's point of view. And Kitan going for a very early 2 minute 30 second reef. Kitan is not at all concerned about being rushed. That can be said for certain. Shardan, on the other hand, not that concerned about rushing. 8 LC and 2 QP before building. He hasn't even built a foundation yet. I can't even say before building a foundation. He may build more RPs before then. So both players are going very fast for tech. On Rooftop Showdown, that is surprising. I guess neither player is too underconfident. Oh. Okay, this is game two, by the way. Kitan won game one. I guess it failed to update. Sometimes it fails to update. Anyway. Yeah, Kaiden won game one, so this is game two, by the way. Shardan needs to win this in order to stay in. Kaiden needs to win this if he wants to quickly finish this particular series. And Shardan, I'm a bit surprised. He's, like I said, both players are going heavy for tech. Now, Shardan, I'm not entirely surprised because he had lost game one, so he's not going to want to risk it, throw everything away for a flashy strategy. Kaiden, on the other hand, he won game one. I mean, he can do, well, I guess he is doing whatever. He is going for fast tech. That's his flashy strategy is two and a half minute reef, probably three minute advanced structures and four minute air units. Certainly a... Certainly a bold move. I'll, gar I'll grant that. That is... For Grekum on a map like this... I mean, it's going to work too, but... Or at least it might work. It's certainly not going to be punished too quickly. I mean, Shardan right now is a minute up from where Kitan is. I mean, Kitan's at three minute mark. He hasn't quite gotten advanced structures yet, but that's probably just a matter if he hasn't clicked on the button. He has the resources for it. He's had the resources for it for some time. Kitan on the other... Sorry, Shardan on the other hand, at the 253 mark, getting his RPs up and not quite... Doesn't have the foundation, but he is going to be 8 LC, 4 QP before that first foundation. And that is big. That is really big because Shardan is... Shardan is really going for the mid to late game. He is not focused at all in the early game. Getting Arianus as well, getting the Aerial Control Center... He has Zion Pulsars coming in. Not so focused on Zion Turtles as he was last time. But yeah, four minutes. Four and a half minutes in and we see the first vehicles. Normally it's about four minutes. So this is about, well, 30, well, 45 seconds later than normal for Zion Pulsars. And advanced structures at three minutes. There it is. Three minutes advanced structures and probably in four minutes, or at the four minute mark, we will see... Well, it should see a Faro pretty, right about now, actually. I don't know where the... Well, I guess he didn't bother the paperwork when he... No, he did. He did. Never mind. He did get it. It was over here. But he's now not gotten it. Nope, that's two octaves. Interesting. He's not going that quickly for an aerial control center. How odd. Shardon, on the other hand, did go for... Sorry, aerial control center. Aspire. The equivalent to an aerial control center. Same thing. It's just... Wreck him. Not Fekir. Also based on proximity rather than adjacency. But that's not the point. The point is that Kitan is just like Shardan going for a mid to late game strategy. Both players are very focused on that. Although Kitan, like I said, was going for an early game early on. It's just, why is he... I'm surprised that Spire isn't popping up. I really am. I, I would expect a Spire to have popped up already. Well, okay, once Advanced Structures is done. There's no Faro. There's the money for the Faro. He could definitely afford it now. Although he can't afford... Oh, he can't afford air units, of course. He hasn't... He hadn't pre-built the... the RPs. I probably should have noticed that. He hadn't built those RPs and QP beforehand, so getting air units at four minutes is not going to happen. Getting Aspire at four and a half minutes is more likely, but given the pace at which Shardan has gone, it's the 445 mark, and he's just sending out his Zion Pulsars to attack. I think Kaiden has plenty of time. There's the Faro at the 420 mark. Okay, maybe not plenty of time, actually. In fact, this is getting, this is cutting it rather close. Faro is going to be able to set up Aspire, and the Sepipod will be... Actually, I think a Faropod will be buildable by the time the Spire is done. Nope, Sepipod will be, though. And will it be? 
Now it appears that he is waiting for enough QP for the Pharopod. A couple more cycles for that to happen, and once it does, you have to worry about this. Well, Zion Pulsar coming in in about 15 seconds from when he is. So Kitan, so Shardan is about 15 seconds down from then. Actually, jump back to a minute and a half down from that point. When the attack starts, still going for Zion Pulsars, shifting around his RPs to increase Q plasma production. Actually, what is he doing? He's shifting around his RPs a lot. Anyway, 6 LC, 6 QP, no RPs anywhere else on the map at this point, just the QP and R LC RPs that he has so far. And a Shin Turcher coming up quite quickly, just in case a Farabot happens. Kitan, on the other hand, like I said, he's... Well, he's getting Faros, he's not getting Faro Pods. Possibly worried about getting hit by cloaked units, though. And Zion Pulsars are in, the Shin Turchers are in, and Kitan is aware of the Shin Turcher as well, so he's probably not going to build a Farapod by mistake. Admittedly, Farapod still would be fairly powerful. Farapod's Epipod pair would just tear apart the Shin Turcher and then rip apart the Zion Pulsars afterwards. But really, the problem is timing. The thing is, is that Kitan, he's not... Okay, there's the Epipod, but he doesn't have a whole lot of time right now. He is, by the way, about two seconds... Oh, sorry. 50 seconds down from there, he's about... Almost a minute down from when the attack happens, or half a minute now from when the attack starts. Shardon, on the other hand, about 40 seconds up from there. He is, from his point of view, doing extremely well, dealing a lot of damage, getting rid of Kitan's base, getting rid of everything Kitan has. Kitan, back to the 610 mark, however, when the attack starts, has a couple of Sephiroth's in consideration, along with a couple of Faros. The Faros, they probably don't have a huge chance, and... No, they actually are doing fine. The Zion Pulsars were quite focused on getting rid of the, du or getting rid of the Triad, rather than getting rid of the attack units, but this past round, Shardon has gone wise to it and is now taking out the Spire, focusing down that, and instead of focusing anything else down. That being said, Kitan does have Sephiroth and Farapod available, but more Shin Churchers and Zion Pulsars are coming in. Farapod has actually gone down, by the way. That, that Farapod... No, never mind. It's over here. What am I saying? It's not gone down. Kitan was just building that Farapod. It has not yet been built, but the Spire, that's the key thing. If the Spire goes down, it's going to be very difficult for Shardon to get, sorry, for Kitan to get out of this. He could, of course, use Octopods. That's still a viable option, but he seems to be focusing fairly heavily on air, and that Spire is still fine. The Reefs are going to spend a lot of the energy healing it, though. So in the next attack, which will be shortly coming, actually, is Shardon? Shardon does not have Gate Tech. He's nowhere near getting Gate Tech. doesn't have Skip Teleport on these guys either, so it's purely a matter of walking into the base. Which he's likely to do fairly soon, I would think. And Teth Pulsar as well. A nice, a nice even army here. Teth Churchers, Shin Churchers, Zion Pulsars, Teth Pulsars. Not a bad set. And the RP is now teleporting away because they have to. Kitan, on the other hand, does not have to worry about that yet. Although, admittedly, Grekham RPs cannot teleport. They can merely fly. But he is still building RPs to the south. He's still taking care of the expansion while he has the chance. And at the same time, to the south side making sure to intercept any expansion attempts that Shardon may have. And looks like Shardon actually is aborting... Well, he's aborting this attack. Must have attacked with this and it echoed out. But that is no longer the case. And in fact... Well, let's double checking that... Well, Jarakun is at the present, as he should be. Separate Pony focusing on the Implemental Past Edge. Neither player knows... Neither observer knows about this section. Which is unfortunate. But anyway, it looks like the attack happened and was aborted. And now Kitan doesn't have to worry about it. He does have to worry about the attack that hit him earlier, but like I said, that got healed up at the expense of most of his reef energy. Another reef being built up just to make up for this, make sure that there is enough reef energy when the next attack occurs. And at the same time, Shardon going for a nice harassment there on the south side of the map. Shardon is dealing quite a bit of damage to that south side of the map. Well, okay, it's one RP, but still, good to do. Make sure that Kitan isn't able to expand at will. And Kitan still, however, has been able to expand to this southeast side of the map. Kitan, back in the 924 mark, is going to defend his expansion. Small property, but it's still what he's going for. He's going to make sure that nothing Shardon can do will actually have an effect, and he's going to be able to do so. Shardon not going for a counterattack. In fact, he might be going for a interception on these guys, trying to defend against his defense, or trying to support his attack here. Where, however, Shardon is going from here, I'm not quite sure. Kitan is getting chronoporting, and this is where I'm not 100% sure about what he's planning on doing. Because he only has a couple of Sephiroth and a Farabod. Now, chronoporting is very powerful, 
And he doesn't have four QPRPs, but he doesn't have a huge army to support it to begin with. He has to build those units with the Q Plasma that he's using to Chronoport. It's going to be a little bit tricky. It should still be fairly powerful, especially he's going to Chronoport these guys back. No doubt about it. These guys are going to be Chronoported as soon as the tech is done. And that is going to be in about 10 seconds. Well, five seconds actually, because this is on double time. Then fast forward. And it will be, looks like about now. I expect a pause to happen any second now. Shardland's forces are coming in to intercept. Shardland's actually at this point in time, by the way. Titan, surprisingly not. There it goes. There's the pause. Chronoport will be happening at the 10 minute mark. We'll get a Chronoport back to probably about here or so. Yes, to the 714 mark. And a direct attack on the base. Hitting Q Plasma RPs. That's going to be. Well, let's see what Shardland has. He has a lot of Q Plasma. If Shardland goes for Gate Tech, that's going to be a problem. And it looks like he is. But even then, it's not going to be the biggest problem. Shardland actually has a lot of Q Plasma for Liquid Crystal. The attack will probably be fairly annoying. Whether or not it's meaningfully damaging is yet to be seen. There's a lot of Q-Plasma in reserve. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. However, that is still a fairly tough thing to call at this point. Now, Titan, on the other hand, Blue Time Wave is carrying what may be the thing that does it for him. So from Shardas' point of view, we see his resources now. It looks like he's actually losing a lot of RPs. Lost a couple of RPs already, as you can see the little white flashing lines, that's death. However, Shardan, not worried too much about that. He had a lot of his army at the time that the attack occurred, so this attack is likely to be just as valid then as it is now. That being said, it looks like the attack's gone past RPs, judging by the death lines. Well, there's five deaths now, that could still be RPs, but I think... I think it's gone past that. Shardan, however, not too concerned about this. He's, I don't even know if he's noticing the blue time wave, what's happening there. Because he is dealing a lot of damage to... Titan's expansions. Here we're sweeping him north in the Titan's base, and that's a massive army compared to Titan's. Now, Titan, on the other hand, despite his army size, he is still harassing as well, and like I said, that Chronoport is going to deal a lot of damage to the Q Plasma infrastructure. More army being built, so Titan actually. Titan once still has a lot of Q Plasma. He's still been able to deal with that, probably just building a lot of Sebi Pods rather than Far Pods. He's building both, but Far Pods are definitely more Q Plasma intensive. And. Farpod intercepting the expansion before it comes in. This could actually reduce Shardan's army appreciably. The blue time I've just about to hit, by the way, and we will see what's happened uh, from Kitan's point of view. We'll see once it overtakes him. It's about to overtake him in about a few well, a few seconds. We'll see it overtaking him. He jumps back, and all the Q Plasma RPs are dead, but it looks like he lost quite a few of his... He lost his Farpod as well during that attack, but still a successful harassment. That being said, Shardan may prove that it wasn't as successful as necessary... Despite that harassment, Shardan is still dealing a huge amount of damage to Chitin's base, to Chitin's economy, and Chitin has enough Q Plasma in reserve. He could Chronoport back and deal with this pretty well. He hasn't done so yet. And in fact, most of his army is actually out of position. Very much so. Immediately, Chronoporting is exactly what you need to get into position, from position to being out of position. But Chitin is not taking advantage of that. Despite the fact that he has the Q Plasma to do so, he is not Chronoporting back with this and I am surprised. I mean, just as a way of reinforcing your own army to defend the base to stop the attack from happening, I'm a little bit surprised this isn't happening. It looks like Shardan is going to take this game. I think Kitan has lost this game. Yeah, he's... This is pretty much it. I mean, this Farpod, admittedly, Shardan needs to go back and attack the Farpod. And he has done so from his point of time. Look at Kitan's point of view. A Teth Torture comes in and gets rid of this Farpod. Looks like it actually comes from the base. A Farpod, however, coming into Shardan's base to try to destroy that as well. Titan just trying to get rid of everything Shardan has, but the important thing in this game is that you have military units. If you lose all your structures, you're still alive, but if you have no military units, you are dead. Well, military units and structures. But Shardan still has his... Titan still has his base entirely, though. I mean, it's under heavy attack, but he still has it. But Shardan is still in this game. And Kitan looks like he's not. Kitan is going to lose this out. All he has is his base. He has Q Plasma, but he doesn't have any inclination to Chronoport. And actually, given the health of that Farpod, I am not surprised. Given the health of this Farpod, I am surprised. But, oh, sorry. I'm sorry pointing, pointing out that when when Shardan shifted his RPs to Q Plasma early to get 6 and 6, that was for Shin Turchers. And that's a good point. Shin Turchers are very Q Plasma expensive, so I can totally see that. And, okay, Farpod is Chronoporting back. At 16 health, it probably won't be much of a defense, but 
Titan is at least trying what he can, and another Chronoport occurring. Okay, so there is... Oh, that's the Chronoport we saw earlier. That's the arrival we saw to attack the RPs in transit. But even with that, I doubt that's going to make much difference. Titan's Chronoporting here is not that big of a deal, I'm afraid. And actually, let's double-check. This might, in fact, be a bit of a change. Nope, no, it's not. That, that Savvy Pod's down doesn't look too much has changed from this. This head torture actually is a lot weaker. That might be a change. Sharna may want to worry about that. He's apparently not too concerned. He's actually not focusing on that the past. I don't even know if he has if he knows that Titan has chronoporting yet. He must suspect at this point. He's noticing the timeline is changing. But he doesn't need to be too worried about the blue time of and here's okay, there's the chronoport I was looking for. Admittedly at this point, Chardon had already lost his base, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. And Chardon could actually rebuild his base if he had a Shinveer spare. And wouldn't you know what he does? He could, in fact, rebuild his base if he wished. Although the Shinveer is coming in a bit of a threat from the Octo, but not enough that's going to matter. Yeah, this is it. Chardon basically can't... I mean, he's just double-checking what's going on. This is playable past. He can't actually affect anything going on here. But he could rebuild. He has the means to do so. In fact, he could rebuild inside Kitan's base if he so chose. And, I mean, rebuild within 30 seconds. You'd have everything, or 50 seconds, because Depot takes 50 seconds to build. But yeah, he could get the entire base rebuilt in a minute and a half. You have the foundations quickly, and the Annex and Depot built simultaneously. The RP is basically being built. Actually, that'd be the hardest part. But everything else would be fairly trivial. But Chardon, at the 1333 mark, two minutes down from the Impulva Past, he's not doing to change too much. And it looks like... I'm not sure this is Paradox City. Chardon seems to think that there's a paradox going on, and while there may very well be, I don't see it. It looks like both states are... Chardon and Kitan were... Okay, now they aren't, but they were at different timeline or time waves, so it would have been alternating states, but the states looked about the same. Not exactly the same, but close enough that Chardon still had it. And this is where, like I said, Chardon had a lot of money in the bank. So that's the expansion destruction was not that big of a deal. Kitan throws in the towel. That is game. Chardon wins game two. We'll be going on to game three, despite the, I know, despite the win counter. But yeah, we'll be going on to game three in just a moment. So stay tuned for that while I clean up this win counter. Welcome back, Acron fans, to game three of series two of round. Loses round three of the Acron 2013 Christmas Tournament. I'm Shadow333, bringing you a match between, well, like I said, match three of Kitan versus Shardon. This is going to be on Tomb of Heroes, which a lot of people really like as a map. And I'm glad. I'm glad people like that map. I think it's a cool map. Anyway. So we are on is Duel 3. Let's rock. Kitan at the west side of the map is probably going to go for Grekham again. Shardon for Vekir, most likely. Nothing has changed too much here, so Shardon... On this map, I would be surprised if the players went for anything other than an economy strategy. The thing is, is that this map is actually the same, or slightly wider than Rooftop Showdown, but the rush distance is longer just due to the slightly more weaving paths. There are two rush paths, as if any of you have been watching regularly have seen. The North Path is often used, especially for proxies. People will often build up their buildings as proxies along the North Path and take these crates. While the south path is typically more the direct attack route. Although admittedly, I think they're actually equidistant. I don't think there's a difference which one you take. Other than the fact that it's harder to see uphill than it is just see across. So I'm actually a little bit surprised people... I guess it's just the... It'll automatically take the, nor the south path. But yeah, the north path is probably better overall. Anyway, Kaiden is not there. Kaiden is over here. Kaiden is starting out with a... Well, he's starting out with regular economy, nothing too special. Chardon, on the other hand, same thing. He's going for 6LC, 2QP, and probably going to go for 6LC, 2QP, Depot, which is actually less economical than I would have expected. Certainly less economical than the Rooftop Showdown game we had last. I mean, 8LC, 4QP before building a Depot. That is... That is economy focus. This map, however, it looks like he might be going for earlier Zion Pulsar. Focusing on that. Actually... Looks like he might be going... He's going to the north, taking that expansion to the north very quickly. While Kitan is... 
going to be, well, going down south and, well, actually going to his base, not even going down south. The scouts from Chardon are coming from the south, but Kaiden is staying in his base comfortably, getting up an early Seppi, an early Reef, which at this point is not surprising from Kaiden, and an early Octo as well, probably, well, not early Octo, it's probably another RP, but it's not being set for RP construction. This Octo is, this Octo here looks like it's meant to replace the Octo that's just been used for RP construction, and that's an interesting way of going about it. Let's see, is it going to progen mode? It looks like it is not. So it's probably Octo meant for scouting, meant for an attack. Probably to scare Shardon a bit. And Shardon getting the foundation for Depot. And, and getting the foundations in Kaiden's base as well. So Kaiden is going to be taking a fair amount of damage from this. However, this is obviously well into the future. Kaiden has two minutes to prep for this. Well, about two minutes. He has the Octos, he can deal with this. The Zion Veer is not coming alongside the Shin and Teth Veer, so the Shin and Teth Veer will not have a way to get rid of the Octo. And it's actually kind of funny, because the Octo is leaving just the wrong timing, too. Shardon was a couple seconds later, although Millie Kitan is going to be aware of this attack, but... No, never mind. Kitan is aware enough of this attack, he's not even going to move out. I'm not... I'm kind of being silly, because there's actually no way you could win that timing. Kitan can just change things. This is Akron, after all. Changing the past is basically what this game is all about. So Kitan could easily just go, as he did, and stop the Doctor from ever having gone out to scout. Which is exactly what he did. Echoed out the scouting, and that is when we are here. Shardon, a couple minutes up from here, or a minute up from there. That's when he's his depot, the 413 mark. Bit of a later depot. And the foundations actually got built. Dealing a bit of damage, trying to deal with damage they can to the Octos, and actually not doing too bad. Admittedly, it's kind of Reef versus Foundation at this point, but yeah, the foundations aren't doing too bad for themselves. I think Shardon's going to undo... Yeah, it looks like he's cancelled this out. I'm not going to bother with this. Shardon actually is going to echo this whole attack out. Coming from the north instead. So Kitan's not actually really dealing a whole lot of damage. Like, the damage Kitan is dealing is damage that's not really happening. Shardon will be changing that up. And as you can see from Kitan's point of view, that's exactly what's happening. The Shin and Teth are going to the north. Not worried too much about setting up anything here in the base. Yet. They probably will be. Now... As it stands, Shardon at the 4 minute mark. Okay, he does have a depot, got it at a more normal time. I'm expecting Zion Pulsers, that is the more normal unit. Except he doesn't have the money for it. He doesn't... Well, he's not going for Zion Pulser, apparently. Apparently going for Zion Turcher instead. Wait, what? Oh, never mind. It's not tests for building RPs in a liquid crystal. He's not going for anything. In fact, I forgot to point out, he actually has three more RPs in on LC and two more on QP to the north. So yeah, Shardon very much focused once again on heavy economy. I almost wouldn't be surprised if Halcyon class was researched before he built any vehicles. I have seen that. A couple players have done, I think it was Monkuki that did that. That just built Halcyon class right off the bat. Although admittedly he built it earlier than Shardon is, but yeah, he built Halcyon class and that was the first units he built were Halcyon class units. I think Shardon might be trying to do the same thing. Yeah, he's fully expanded to the north. He has Two full bases right now, pretty well, not full in the main, but definitely in the north he has a full base. Every crate has been saturated as much as it can be. Shardon is well ahead in terms of economy, that's for sure. Kaiden is not punishing this. He's not really aware of this, I don't think. He doesn't seem to realize that Shardon has basically taken the north side for himself. He can't actually see it. This comm hub is not near enough. The point of the comm hub is being able to see your opponent as they move towards this expansion, but not necessarily when they take it over. Now, Kitan, not under attack either. Neither player is really focused to have... Actually, what the heck? Okay, Kitan is not too focused anything, on anything going on later in the future. Shardon is very focused. He's macroing into the future. But Kitan is stuck at the Implobo Past Edge. That's where he's decided to stay. And Zion Pulsar's being built. No Crazy Halcyon class tricks. Instead, Crazy Early Gate Tech tricks. So, skipping Zion Pulsar's at the 645 mark, for which Kitan has actually no defense. Kitan hasn't built up any defenses at this point. He's He could build up advanced structures, but he's been focusing on heavy economy construction of his own. Admittedly, he's three minutes down from when Shardon is, so it's a bit hard to compare. But yeah, he's focused on economy just as much as Shardon is. He's not focused on military. He's not building more units. He's not even getting a lot of tech. He has the money, but I think he might be going for... I don't think he's going for early chrono boarding, but... Well, he can't. He has to get advanced structures first. Like, chrono porting requires advanced structures, but still, I don't know what he's planning on doing. 
Shardon is there. He's got a slip kit. In fact, I think what he's going to do is chronoport back these Zion Pulsers and then skip them in at the four minute mark. So he has skipping Zion Pulsers rushing in here, basically when Kitan is totally defenseless in the unplayable past. That might just work. Admittedly, Kitan does have this Octo set. No, the Octo is in Progen mode. Yes, this could work if Kitan is hit with his powerfully enough. Where is Shardon? Okay, Shardon has actually jumped back a bit from when he had the slip gate going. But yes, Kitan has not set up defenses in the unplayable past. This could rip him apart. This could actually destroy him. He does have advanced structures being built up. He's going to get a, a Spire very soon, and he's from there going to be able to get air units. But Kitan has nothing else on the map. As you see, the only place he can see is his own main base. That is it. Kitan is here and nowhere else. Shardon, on the other hand, is, of course, in his main, in his north expansion. He's got a stakeout in the north side of Kitan's base. Admittedly, that's actually not a bad idea. This base could be taken by Kitan at any point. And Kitan... The 530 mark has a spire. He has. Well, he has Octos going out to attack to finally harass Shardon. And Shardon, on the other hand, he does have a slip gate up. He does have Zion Turchers up this time, not Zion Pulsers, which I'm actually surprised at. I'm not totally surprised that he seems to quite like Zion Turchers, but Zion Pulsers would have worked just fine, actually. He doesn't know that. He might have suspected Noctopod. And given that, I'm not surprised. But. Zion Turchers are not as powerful. They do not deal as much damage directly. Anyway, Kitan, six minute mark. He does have Octos coming. He does have Sebi Pods coming in to attack this base, and I think Shardon's still going to be fine. He has Gatek. He, it's the Zion Turchers. That's going to be the problem. He, he's not going to be able to afford one of these Zion Turchers. And actually, the Chronoporting itself is also going to be a problem. He's not going to afford all of that either. But it looks like that's not his concern. He is, in fact, not Chronoporting with this. He is purely teleporting, and he's going in from the future as well, and Kitan is attacking, however, at the, well, near the Unplayable Past edge at the 620 mark. The Unplayable Past is, of course, well, the, the real thing. That's where things actually happen. I'm a little bit surprised Shardon did not wait until his point of attack had reached that, and actually especially surprised he didn't bother to chronoport or build a couple more QPRPs in his main base to support the chronoporting, because his expansion is down. His expansion is very much down. So, Shardon is going to have a hard time building those Zion Churchers, as I said. He does have the Slipgate up, but the Zion Churchers, I think only two of them are going to be built. Yeah, these two are the only ones that are going to be built. His other... Wow. His other QPRPs went over to Liquid Crystal, and... Is he going to be building more RPs? Because he has enough money to do so. But he's not focused on that. He is, however... Out of QP. He cannot Chronoport. He tried, and it didn't work. And now, at this point, Shardon is... <laughs> well, Kitan is sending up Octos up to the north. I think Shardon will be aware of this. He probably lost his... Or actually, no. No, it doesn't look like he actually lost his Shinveer and Tethveer to this. I don't see any deaths of them. It... Well, they're here. Oh, never mind. He did. Yeah, Shardon's point of view. He did lose them in the unplayable pass. He's double-checking what went on. Realizing that Kitan is basically going to be taking this match if Shardon's not on the ball and rebuilding. He needs a lot more QPRPs. He doesn't have any QPRPs. He has no... Or very few Zion Veer. I think he's no Zion Veer. He's basically dead in the water due to the lack of QP. He actually he gets to transfer a lot of these RPs to QP. Like half these RPs could go into QP, and he'd be fine. But he's not doing that. He's actually near the present, about three minutes up from when Kitan is and when Kitan's been attacking. And Kitan's gonna go from here to attack Sharnan's main base. No, he's not. He's defending his own base, going back to his own base. Not sure if he's sure what's going to happen. Shardon does have Gate Tech, but he hasn't actually used it for Chronoporting. Which is where you'd think he'd use it. Well, I mean, he tried, of course, but he ran out of Q-Plasma er too early. None available. And at this point, no Willick Crystal either. So, Shardon pretty much lost this game thanks to Kitan's very timely attack. Like, that attack stopped a Chronoport. That would have happened. And Chronoporting coming in from Kitan, how... How timely of him for that as well. Eight minute mark, gonna work in there, and he's the only one who actually is able to chronoport units. Shardon has, therefore, okay, there we go. Eight for the mark, Shardon has teleported his QP, or RPs to QP from LC. No Zion Veer to rebuild them, none in constru none under production either, actually, surprisingly enough. His Zion Turchers are to the north where they were set up. He's not gonna bother burning Chrono Energy to bring them back home quite yet. And Kaiden has chronoporting. And remember, he is Grekin, which means that chronoporting can t come to effect any time. Doesn't need a slipgate, doesn't need anything else. And Shardon now has the ability to chronoport. 
926 marks gonna chrono back to the six ish minute well gonna chrono back one of them. 63 yeah, he didn't have enough Q plasma for both. The gate needs to finish recharging and Chardon trying to defend that north side, trying to actually allow it to be rebuilt, should not end up in a paradox. It may, however, be slightly problematic, but he is going to be able to... If he's able to defend, it's going to be a causally consistent defense. We'll see what happens when he actually, when someone actually looks at that point in time, if someone looks at that point in time. Kaiden, however, for him, he has not chronoported yet. But bear in mind, we are in shenanigans territory. This far apart, that's a good candidate. There we go. Pause is happening. Chronoport is happening. There it is, a 650 mark. Chronoport into these Liquid Crystal RPs before the Slipgate's even done. The Slipgate itself could be destroyed at this point. And there's that Zion Turcher coming in, try to help defend against this. And it does not help one bit. It kills an Octo. Yeah, it doesn't help. Unfortunately, none of Zion Turcher's coming in. This Zion, second Zion Turcher didn't get a Chronoport back usefully. It does arrive a bit later, but even with that, Titan is still dealing enough damage. This Farapod able to get rid of the Slipgate. It's probably going to get rid of the Slipgate before the chronoporting even happens. So I'd say that Shardon has pretty conclusively lost this game. And this Farapod, or not Farapod, not even there yet. The Farapod is basically going to be able to tear it apart. And the chronoported Octos as well, though it looks like those aren't going to actually do anything right now. But yeah, this Chronoport Farpod. Well, wait. Did that Farpod Chronoport? Looks like the Farpod actually died before it managed to Chronoport. I think Shardon may have a chance. Bit hard to tell at this point, but I think Shardon may actually be in a position where he'll have a way out. It's going to be a very tight one, though. I don't. Well, <laughs> I don't know how it's going to work, but apparently it's going to involve a lot of Pulsar class units. Spending all of his money on Pulsar class units. Admittedly, this is not money he technically has. And on specials for, or no, just auto defense for Slipgate Repel. Not a bad idea, but probably too late. I'm guessing it's going to be too late. I mean, at this point, yeah, that Repel could work, but it's not on in time. It's not on back here. Auto defense does exist, but Repel is not on when Titan's actually attacking. Titan's bound to be chronoporting any time now. And if Titan chronopores back, he's going to be able to chronopore back before the Slipgate gets Repel. The only thing that Kaiden doesn't have going for him is the fact that he is... Well, he has having to rebuild a lot of his army. But he can. He has tons of money with which to do so. And with that, it's pretty much game. Yeah, he's come in. This Farapod, Chronoport back, dealt enough damage. The Octopods as well, Chronoport back to deal damage to the QPRPs. Try to stop Shardon from being able to Chronoport as well. And build up this massive army. And Kaiden hasn't even used most of his resources. Now he's finally using them. Building a ton of Octos. Possibly building up pod class units as well on mass, but I think he's going to be I think he's going to be satisfied with this. Though, and yeah, he's pretty much does he have this game? I think he might. Shardon is going for a second slipgate, or I mean, aerial control center, never mind. Going for an aerial control center just to deal with this, but even then I don't know. Trying to chronoport back what he can to deal with the Farapod and Octopods, but that is it. He doesn't have time. That he is right. It is indeed too late. And that is the game, and that is Shardon out of the tournament. Well, once the game is over and everything, and he surrenders and so forth. But yes, that is Shardon out of the tournament. Kaiden moves on to round four, and that will be against Monkuki. But we'll see that after this is done. And there we go. Kaiden has won two to one against Shardon. So well done to Shardon. He does. So, well, well done enough to Shardon. Well done to Kaiden. Kaiden's only one. Well done to Shardon for putting up a good fight, though. Definitely entertaining series. Like I said, next is Monkuki versus Kitans. We'll be starting out fairly shortly after a small break, so stay tuned for that.